Welcome to our 2024 F1 Spanish Grand Prix predictions. I'm Sagan and today I'm alone doing the reaction as Ajax is on, I think that was a bit con. Uh, so I'm alone here this time. Anyways, um, try to keep this fairly quick. We had a, a fairly okay Grand Prix, wasn't too exciting or too boring either. So, so yeah, let's get into it. Predictions, our predictions were pretty decent at least from the from the first look obviously missing some points here and there but yeah um that's about it when it comes to the grand prix well um as i said it was it was okay nothing too special um there were times during the grand prix that i felt that was pretty boring but other than that there were some a uh, few moments that made it a little exciting at least from the from the fighting perspective and there are some some great battles uh, throughout the field, but uh, the overall excitement for the race wasn't that big. Um, yeah, uh, there's the spreadsheet. Um, I am two points behind uh, after uh, after Canadian Grand Prix, so I hope to uh, bang all the points this time. Sorry, qualifying, which uh, obviously <laughs> as as uh, very usual, we had some. Some exits. Uh, Q1 was uh, the double V carp or Toro Rosso or whatever you call it. Uh, exit that was uh, pretty, pretty unexpected um, as we saw them having upgrades, but they didn't seem very good in practice and in the end uh, made them get knocked out in Q1, outqualified by both Saubers. So that's also an important thing to mention. The Guanajo qualified in, in, into Q2 for the first time this year. Still good out qualified by Bottas in the end, but that's kind of kind of what happens usually. Williams uh, last row and the the last sixteenth uh, driver was I think Kevin Magnussen. So yeah, nothing too uh, well, uh, <laughs> unexpected there. Q two was um, I think pretty normal as well. We had some usual exits with the Aston Martins uh, with the Salvers obviously, and I think was an exit for uh was the other driver <laughs> i kind of forgot uh let me see yeah hulkenberg i think qualified like 12 or 13 so yep that's that's q2 q3 we had the usual top four teams with this time uh alpine being the fifth fastest team um both of them qualifying into q3 and ended up finishing the points as well when it comes to qualifying, our points, um, well, no points for the first two positions, as it was Lando on pole position by a very small margin over Max Verstappen. Yeah, <laughs> those two reversed. It's going to be very exciting for at least qualifying for this year, but I don't really feel like the races will be well close as long as Max has the car to win. Because obviously, if Max has the car to win, it's very difficult to challenge him. Uh, in that sense, because he, he, he can win even when the car is not dominant. Even maybe this weekend, it, we, we could arguably say that Red Bull wasn't the quickest car and Max still won comfortably. So, yeah, that's, that's Max Verstappen for you. P3 was Lewis Hamilton, his first podium since, I think, uh, Mexico last year. So, uh, quite a long time since the last Lewis podium. I predicted him out of top five. So, uh, yeah, uh, P three in qualifying was Lewis. Yeah, P four was Russell. So no points here as well. And P five in qualifying was Charles Leclerc. So no points here either. So and that was from qualifying, at least for both of us. When it comes to the race, we obviously get the points for Lando and Max. Um, finishing one two. Uh, Piastri didn't finish on the podium. That was Lewis. So. No points here. P4 was George Russell. No points. And P5 was Charles Leclerc. So no points here either. Uh, the fastest lap was, um, I think, Lando. So no points here either. Uh, other notable mentions from the race. Uh, well, there were not many. Uh, obviously, Alpine double points is quite uh, interesting to mention. Obviously, Gasly had a very good race, I think. He could have scored more, um, but unfortunately he couldn't. Um, 
least impressive team. This is, I think, pretty pretty straightforward uh, point for AJX. Uh, although Aston could be also very good, but Toro Rosso was, I mean, we didn't expect such a team that Scott will be in sixth place in the, in the constructors to get a knockdown in Q1 and finished way behind uh, the points paying positions. Has is obviously incorrect as they well got the usual P11 with Paul Kumberg. Least impressive driver, George Russell, definitely not it, and Alonso uh, wasn't too bad either. It was a very average Aston Grand Prix, so there's nothing really you could say about Alonso. He beat his teammate, I think. So, yeah, that's, that's the usual. Um, yeah, no points. Who would I give the least impressive driver to? It's a difficult question. Uh, probably Piastri. I, I definitely expect more from Piastri, not, not him to just randomly lose pace. And yeah, that was not a great Grand Prix from PS3. Most impressive team, I think this uh, is straight up, straightforward point for me. Although McLaren could be uh, a very good shout as well, but PS3 wasn't there and Lionel didn't win the Grand Prix with the fastest car. So, yep, unfortunately, uh, that was McLaren, but I got a point. So, yeah, for me, most impressive driver, definitely not Alex P19 qualifying. Well, I'll qualify as teammate, but that's the bare minimum when it's Logan Sargent. And most impressive driver, Lewis. This is a very good one. And I'm willing to give Ajax a point here. Because honestly, uh, there are like three drivers that I could give this point to Gasly. Of Verstappen and, and Hamilton, and out of those three, I have, I don't know which one would I actually choose. I'm gonna go with a point for Ajax, as uh, I'm pretty sure he would argue for Hamilton, uh, most impressive driver there. I get an extra prediction point as Hamilton beat uh, Russell in both qualifying and the race, which is pretty rare this year, actually, in the head to heads. And 19 driver finish that's that's false, obviously. as uh, all 20 drivers finished the race. It was actually interesting. Yep, uh, four points for both of us. So I'm still training by two points uh, after the Spanish Grand Prix, after the first 10 races. Uh, next up is the Austrian Sprint, so hopefully I can uh, I come back from from this deficit of two points that I'm, I'm in ever since, like, Imola. Yep, um, okay. Let's wrap this up. Thank you, everyone, for watching this video uh, and watching it while well, watching or listening to me waffling alone about the Spanish Grand Prix. I tried to make this fairly quick, really short. And yeah, until next time, see ya.